Hello everybody, this is Brian with the Instructional Tech Team. And in this video, we're gonna look at GarageBand on the iPad and specifically look at how GarageBand and the waveforms produced by the, by the audio recordings in GarageBand could be used for a literacy purposes, specific to some of our younger readers. So um, just kind of an interesting idea that we've heard from other schools who have used the GarageBand as a literacy tool. And so I wanted to share it with you. So here we are in GarageBand. I'm gonna start a new project by clicking the plus in the far upper left. And we're gonna do just an audio recorder project. So I have a first grader myself, and um, this is something that I have watched her go through. And so I wanted to share it with you because I think it's kind of a neat use. I'm gonna act just a little bit here so that you can get a sense for it. But the idea is that we're gonna have student read a particular passage from something that they are reading, and we're gonna have, it read, have them read it multiple times. And what we're gonna take a look at is how that reading has improved over multiple attempts. So here we go. We're gonna do our first track. I'm gonna do a quick setting check here. Turning off my metronome and my count in. And I am also going to click my plus button up here. Section A and automatic. So now I'm all set for this. That is something you'll have to do at the beginning of every project. And it's something you'll wanna be able to teach your students. So here we go. I'm going to read a short passage in my best attempt to channel my first grade daughter. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep e enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before some somebody somebody lifted the Lorax away. So I'm going to stop that recording now. All right, so we've had the student read their first attempt. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the audio file that, that, that was created or the waveform. All right, so now as we look at this waveform, some things that you see here, anytime you see a larger bubble, and I know they're a little small and a little hard to see, but every time you see a large bubble, that represents audio that was spoken. And every time you see flatlining, that typically represents silence, okay? Now, if there was a level of background noise in the room as we were doing this, you'd see kind of small lines through the whole thing. The larger the waveform is, the louder the, the audio was. Um, but still, the idea of flatlining is silence. The other thing that we can look at from this perspective is that Right here, it is just over 22 measures, or just under 22 measures in length it took me to read that. So now what we're going to do is we are going to mute this particular one, and we talked about that in an earlier video. So here I'm going to go ahead and open my settings, and I'm going to mute this. Great. Now it's time for reading attempt two. So we're going to add a new track. I'm going to click the plus button down here. I'm going to do another audio recorder track. Now I muted that so I wouldn't hear my previous reading while I was reading because that could be pretty confusing for a kid. So I mute that first track and now I'm gonna take a second attempt at reading it and see how we do. And here we go. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep, enough you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. All right, so now we stop that. Okay, so that's two attempts at the reading. Now we're going to hop in and take a look at the audio form. And we're going to see how the two change and how they match up. 
All right. I'm going to do one more attempt at this. So just to repeat, I'm going to go here and slide this over. I'm going to mute my second recording track. Okay. And I'm going to click my plus button down here. And I'm going to add my, this is going to be my third attempt at reading. So here we go. Let's see how we do. And deep in the grickle grass, some people say, if you look deep enough, you can still see today where the Lorax once stood just as long as it could before somebody lifted the Lorax away. Great. So now we've had three attempts for the reader. All right. So now there's so many options here that we can look at, okay? I like the visual inspection just at the spacing between, all right? So if we take a look at this, in that first reading, we've got an awful lot of flat lining here, which means an awful lot of um, silence, stops, pauses, things like that. We can also look at, so here on the second one, we see that gets a little bit better. And by the third one, it gets quite a bit better. The other thing that we can look at is how long it took us to get through there. When we start talking about the fluency of reading, the first one was just under 22 bars. The second one was just over, I'm sorry, just under 15 bars. And the third one is now just under about you know, 10 and a half or so. So every time that I read, I have a visual cue here that shows me how my reading has improved as far as fluency goes. Now, the other option that I have is I can listen to it on playback. And you're not going to be able to hear this from your side of things. But for a student to hear on the first one, I turn off, I mute the second and third attempts. And I come down here and unmute the first attempt. Hit play. And you can see, and I can hear as the student, if I turn up the volume loud enough, obviously you won't be able to do that uh, from the video, but I can hear from the student's perspective how I read the first one, then how I read the second one, and then how I read the third one. And this opens the door to conversations about how I got better, why I got better. This can be pretty motivating for kids, and it's also a great way for them to reflect on um, their work. The other piece that I can do with this is I can, first of all, take my best reading. So we're going to hop back into that one. I can take my best reading. I can mute the other two. And now I can mix this song down, the single reading of it, and send it off to my teacher, whether that's being used for running records or whatever. But then I can also, for my own records, label this. So... Fluency, and we'll do practice one. So now I can keep an ongoing record that gets saved up to iCloud or wherever, and over the year, I can listen to my own fluency. And if I come back to this Lorax passage or something else that I'm reading later in the year, I can have a reflection as I go of how my reading has improved. So pretty powerful tool, and I thought it was an interesting way to use it, something we heard from another district, um, but really a powerful way of using what GarageBand can do to present audio in a visual form and also show you timing and things like that. So thought I'd share, and as always, if you have questions or ideas, please feel free to share them.